Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Foresight TV. Today, we are going to be talking about how to network at conferences like a rock star. Um, I've got two veterans of conferences, Lowell Lorraine, who is our business development strategist guru at Senior Living Foresight, um, my good friend Denise Scott, who taught me everything I know about networking, well, almost everything. And uh, we have a bunch of stuff we're going to talk about. But before that, we are going to start with our intro. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Steve Moran here. Steve Moran here. There was something, I don't know about it on your side, but there was something weird about that. It played like it was playing twice or something. I don't know. What and a little echo. I heard yeah, echo. I do not know what that is. And I'm not sure we're going to try this yet. I just want to sort of put this on the table. I'm sort of thinking about dropping a link in uh, to the uh, screen here where people could actually come on platform if they've got a question or a comment. We're going to see how that goes. Now, I have never tried that before. You don't immediately pop on the screen. You are go into sort of a green room so I can see who you there is. And if it's somebody I don't know, I probably wouldn't let you in because I know <laughs> this is not you, but there are creeps and weirdos on the internet out there, as we all know. And in fact, we actually had one of our team members almost got scammed this week out of a couple thousand dollars. It was very sophisticated and scary. And fortunately, she figured it out in time and it did not happen. So let's actually start um, with uh, talking. What I'll, where the place I'd like to start is talk about goals that you people have when they go to conferences. And so Lola and, and Denise, we'll start with you, Lola. What, when you go to conferences, typically what's your goal? So I've been both on the provider side and the vendor side. So I've had a bunch of different goals when I go to conferences. And I've even been to conferences when I wasn't um, currently employed with a company, which meant that my number one goal was to find a job or at least find some freelance work. So, um, you know, the goal is going to be different for every single person. And, and I'll start with, um, you know, working for Senior Living Foresight. My goal when we go to Argentum and, um, and uh, Nick this year is to meet as many people as possible and get them to know who Senior Living Foresight is, um, making sure that they subscribe and just really proving the value of what we offer the industry. Great. And so, Denise, um, we'll just, you know, I think you're largely known, but let's just make sure people know who you are and what you do. So you run a company called Drive. You're the founder of that. And you help organizations um, create better workplaces. Right. So that means um, easier recruiting, less turnover, happier team members, that kind of thing. So what are your goals when you go to conferences? Um, like meeting up on Steve Moran. <laughs> That's how we met. Yeah. I love Steve Marin at it. So this would be a great story, right? Um, it's relationship building for me. So it's it might be uh, building on relationships of people that I've known for years and seeing them and connecting um, with them. Uh, it's uh, meeting new people. and um, But to me, it's really about um, building relationships um, at uh, any conference that I attend. Uh, I'm a nerd, so I also like learning stuff um, and kind of hearing what's happening in our field and beyond our field as well. Um, but the core of it um, really is uh, relationship building for me. And I would say even when I was on the provider side, um, that was true too. I'd love to learn, but it was also a lot about relationships. So there's people to reach out to, to get to know better. And when I had a question or wanted to try something that I heard about at the conference. So one of the things I, one of the things I hear a lot uh, from people who are particularly working inside senior living organizations is they see, uh, they see conferences as a time to do team building and bonding with people who work for each other. And so, you know, I've heard had a few people say to me, you know, I don't really care about meeting new people um, because all I want to do is connect with my team and hang out with my team. I like them. I love them. Don't get to spend much time with them. And that may be never more true than right now since yeah. we've been sort of faced with this force. What would you, how would you respond to that? Denise? Um, I mean, I think that's, 
that's a valid, you know, everybody's different. So for some people that, um, that might be their, their primary goal is to connect. Um, you know, sometimes people go and walk away with a common language. So they have heard the same keynote speaker or, um, they've attended sessions together, or maybe they've attended different sessions, but come back and share what they've learned. Um, but I think that's really valuable to go with a team. Um, I, you know, I, I, Sometimes when I was an administrator, I'd go to a conference and you come back and you're all excited and you're like, let's do this, let's do that. And you know, people kind of look at you like, what Kool-Aid did you drink while you were there? Um, so if you come back with at least one other person that is inspired to do things differently, uh, that definitely helps. So um, yeah, I, I, that's a very valid goal as well. Yeah, Lola? So when I um, used to go uh, with my team, um, when I worked at Escaton, it, uh, a lot of times we would go together to the trade show floor and we would split up and we'd get back together and we would talk about what we saw, what was cool. And it was just a fun experience. Um, I mean, we'd also get together and have like a sit down dinner, but usually there's three days at a conference. So you have time for a team meeting, you have time to hang out with your coworkers and you have time to, to meet new people. Um, another thing that I, I always like to do is to find a, a vendor who's having a dinner and then, you know, that's a bunch of providers around a table and you're all talking about one topic and whether that vendor is a, a CRM company or an EHR company. And now you're, you know, even if you have team members, there and other providers, you get to learn together and network at the same time. Yeah. Yep. And I think being away from your space too, it's kind of like, uh, you know, what Lola just said, maybe think sort of like, you know, when you're driving or you're in the shower or right before you go to sleep, you get all your best ideas and you're like, damn it, why does it have to be now when I have nothing to write on? I think it's the same thing when you go to a conference, you know, you're at that dinner, you're not having to solve a problem. So think your ideas are flowing better. Um, so it's sort of the, the getting away piece too, I think is um, so important for people's um, just kind of overall, um, I don't know, uh, ability to uh, be creative. Yeah. So I, I want to just, I want to kind of touch, I want to sort of touch on some points. I made some notes here. So um, the first thing I guess I really want to say is that as you're looking at your goals is that it is going to be different depending on what you are. Um, you know, if you're if you're in a vendor community, you're going to be looking to sell new contact tax to do to, to do other things. One of the things I see a lot of my vendor friends doing that honestly hurts my heart is they will go to the uh, trade show and they'll do the trade show. They'll do the things they're obligated to do. And then they'll go back and sleep and, and use this as a time to, um, you know, to rest or to go catch up with work. And I get it. Sometimes there's stuff you have to get done. I think almost every conference I'll have a time where I've got to go off and work on something. But uh, in my view, that's a really wasted opportunity. I've built so many great relationships, you know, on, tra on the trade show, in the in the in the white space between meetings even sometimes meeting in, in in big meetings i'll meet somebody that that it should really be seen as an opportunity um certainly if you're not ceo ceus that's a big important thing um pro prospects we'll want to talk a little bit more later about what to talk about and how to approach that if you're in the vendor community because i see a lot of vendor people who have get great contacts and screw it up badly um, and so um, let's talk. The next thing I'd actually talk about is to is is um, is the opportunities to meet people. And I also want to talk about what to say when you meet people. And, and I've got those as separate sections, but we can either address those uh, together. And then um, I'm, we are going to talk about I know why Denise has got a <laughs> that's going to come later. I have a I have a separate topic that will be fairly short. That's titled "That Moment of Profound Embarrassment," and I know that um, Denise and Lola and I have very different ways of appro approaching this moment of, of profound embarrassment. We know all know what we're talking about because we talked about this before we got what got on here, but. Let's talk about, um, uh, I want to talk both about principles on meeting people. The first thing I want to say about meeting people, and then I'm going to sort of run through a list and have you just talk about how you use those or if you use them or see value. The, the number one thing I want to say is you have to treat everybody as if they are the next CEO of the company you want to do. Every single person there has value. Um, I was in a breakout session. 
panelists that I really wanted to meet, big, big company, pretty sure they'd want to meet me too. I was sitting way back. Normally I sit way forward in meetings, but I came in late and I was sitting way back, stood up, started a beeline up there. And this guy came up to me who said, oh man, I really want to meet you. And I was sitting there. I was like, I don't want to get out of here because I got to go meet that person. It's the first chance I've ever seen where I could get in front of that person. But this guy wanted to have a conversation. And so I remembered my values. I had a great conversation. It went nowhere. I don't, I couldn't tell you his name today. I couldn't tell you what day, what it does, but he has value. Everybody's got value. And you know what? That person I didn't meet, I, that I was trying to meet, they disappeared. So I lost it, except that I saw him later and it worked out, right? So everybody has value. I'm gonna run through the rest of the list. Uh, I wanna talk about cocktail parties, lunchtime, trade shows, evenings, um, breakout sessions and um i do want to talk about how friends can be your worst enemy so what do you do for each, any or all of those that, where you see the best opportunities lola the best opportunities well i mean there's there's so much and it takes a while to learn so first off i i wrote an article this week for senior living foresight that um is advice to people who are going to their first season of conferences because my intern that i had in the spring she went to her first conference um, just a couple weeks ago and she called me and she's like what can i expect what do i do and if it's your first year or second year i mean it takes a while to really learn networking especially if you're an introvert like i am yeah. i remember the very first like conference luncheon it was it was a pretty short conference that i went to that i um was there as an individual trying to drum up some work, trying to get some contract work. And I was so nervous. And this was even before I was in senior living. Um, I, I used to uh, live up in Portland and I was part of the Home Builders Association and the residential real estate and new construction world. And I was trying to get some work doing web development, graphic design. I did not talk to a single person in that ballroom. I was so scared. Finally, I was out waiting for the valet, you know, to get my car. And I had a conversation with the person next to me. It ended up being a $6,000 contract for me. And <laughs> it was the last, per, you know, the last possible opportunity of talking to somebody. And finally, you know, I, I mustered up the, 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 um, the courage to do it. So it, you got to start somewhere. If this is your first conference, just try to talk to somebody and and have a, a couple of icebreakers, right? Like, um, don't just ask, you know, where do you work? What's your favorite author? That kind of thing. Um, ask something completely off the wall. Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? What's your favorite memory of your grandma? Um, you know, who who's the the your favorite person you've met who is over eighty? You know, like, I mean, there's so many interesting questions you can ask people that will they'll stop and they'll it'll engage them. So just take every opportunity you can to have a conversation. Denise, um, what's the, que the question? So, is, so, so, so I sort of give you, gave you a list, you know, and we'll just sort of talk a little bit about our next topic as well. And so I'm glad to have talk, talk about either one of those things, because I okay. think knowing what to say is also really, really important in terms of how you start that conversation. Right. Yeah. But, but, but the question, I guess, is sort of, as you go, you know, this is in this, this whole conversation is not about just how do you have fun at a conference, right? It's, it, but it's really, how do you network? And so where do you see the best opportunities for networking at conferences? When you go to go to a conference, what do you sort of say, Oh man, I can hardly wait to that part. Um, well, I think um, for me, I attend uh, the breakout sessions that are appropriate sort of for the work that I do, because not only do I learn, but I usually will meet to go meet the speaker. But the people also in the audience are going to be people that are interested in that particular topic, that space that I work within as well. So um, maybe if the breakout session on recruitment, the people in the audience are probably people that are interested in recruitment, which is work that I do. Um, I've met a ton of people and, and made friends and some people have gone on and come done some, um, some contracting work with us. Um, when I attend that session and then meet the, go and meet the speaker, if it's there or even like that might be the next day, I might see the person and approach. Um, but you know, it's, it's funny to hear because we come so from our own mindset that, you know, I, um, you know, it wasn't until like a few years ago that I realized, you know, not everybody, uh, you know, I could talk to a potted plant in the corner for about an hour. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, um, and, you know, for me to, I remember someone saying to me once, um, I was working with an administrator and I talked to him about walking around more and talking to the staff more. And he said, what would I say? And that was sort of a moment in my life where I was like, wait, what, what would you say? I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to start, where to say, right? Um, but, and, and by the way, that's not good or bad. Like there's a bad to that too, right? Um, and so uh, it's sort of the, the balance of that. But it's, so it's interesting to hear, you know, uh, Lola's perspective of it, of it. And then my perspective is probably I have to shut my mouth and not talk too much and, uh, and listen about the other uh, the person um, more. Yeah. So it's really interesting to me. I, I uh, several years ago, I read an article that said, well, when you go to conferences, everybody goes, well, what do you do? And that's a terrible, boring uh, opener. And so I was reading this article and I was looking at other other suggestions. And one of the suggestions was to ask people what their passion was. And I really like that because passion is sort of a thing that's really big to me. And I bet if I ask either Denise or Lola, of course, both of whom I know well what their passions were, they just, you know, I, we wouldn't have enough time to hear it all. Yeah. So I started asking this question at conferences, often to people I knew at least a little bit, and it really creeped them out yeah. so badly. In fact, one guy got really offended by it. I, I, and I was like, I don't know, it seems like it still seemed like a good question, but it wasn't, you know, if it was just one data point, it would have been fine. And so honest to God, I still mostly start with, what do you do? But here's yeah. my... Here's my second question that I asked that I actually really like, and that's what are you working on that is new, cool, interesting, exciting? Mm. Right? Um, and, um, um, and the other question I heard, I was actually listening to a podcast this morning, and the, uh, this is not in the context of trade shows, but a question I really like that might be interesting to ask is, um, is what is your genius? What are you just like crazy better at than anything else? So, mm. um, and I think anything that you're asking in the sense of that you're really interested in the answer, you know, I know I think that's the biggest part about it, if it's right. genuine, um, because I can ask you, you know, what do you, what are you, uh, what are you really interested in working on and been like, and who's behind you is somebody more important than I need to talk to, um, or I could be genuinely an, uh, interested in the answer. So um, I, I think however you're asking that, and a lot of this, that's what it comes down to, right? So it's sort of find something that you're comfortable with because if you use a question that's quote unquote, a good question for you, like I would feel really bad asking people like, what's your passion? Like it just wouldn't be a good fit for me. Right. Um, so it would come across, I think as sort of contrived and sort of odd. Um, and so, yeah, so I just, I think it's something that you feel comfortable with is probably the best question. Well, also, just think about this. When you're asking the question, you're giving them a platform to talk, right? So you have to be an active listener. The yeah. best way to build a relationship is to actively listen to the other person. Yeah. So if you jump into a conversation where you're like, me, 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 which yeah. has happened a dozen times to me at, at conferences, yeah. I just start rolling my eyes going, oh, my God, this guy is boring me. Like, I can't wait to get out of here. And, it, and if they asked me a question about myself and I got to share a little bit, I'd be more interested than to listen to that person. Yeah. I remember reading this Times article a few years ago, and it talked about this guy that went to a party. And he said he's, he wanted at the party just to listen to people. So he wasn't going to tell anybody anything about himself. He was just going to listen and ask more questions about that person. And then um, somebody met one of the people he had talked to that night and said that he was the most interesting person they'd ever met. And he had said nothing about himself, yeah. but he had just asked all these questions yeah. and obviously did a good job of it. Uh, but I thought, wow, that's pretty telling about how, to your point, well, a lot of people just want to feel valued and uh, appreciated and important. So, so I want to give a few practical tips on several things. So um, you go to a breakout session. First thing I want to say is go sit in the front. I know that it's terrible because sometimes it's so bad you have to get up and walk out. Don't be afraid to have that that walk of shame if it's terrible. There's no problem <laughs> in doing that. Um, but it will give you the opportunity. And, and uh, a lot of times you should be picking your sessions because the speakers are people you'd like to meet. Mm -hmm. The one thing I want to say to you vendors, though, is that senior living operators are really too nice of people. So I, I, wrote, I shared a cab with a, a good friend who's an operator at a conference uh, about a year and a half ago, just as things were shutting down. We were talking about this. 
And he was telling me that um, I, I was complaining that operators are too nice to vendors sometimes. And I know if you're a vendor, you're going to hate this, but please understand that this is actually true. So he told me that he had in his pocket cards from seven different architects and because they gave him cards and he gave them cards, right? So there was this mutual exchange. So there are seven architects that, that came out of that meeting think, oh man, I've got this great opportunity with, can't tell you the name of the person who's doing it, don't have permission to do that. When in reality, he actually has an architect he loves. He's not interested in changing. He's not going to change. It's going to be a waste of time. So for you guys who are operators, please don't be afraid to say, you know, we're not really looking for that, right? I don't want to be rude. I don't, but I don't want to set your expectations because they'll bug you. It'll make your life worse as an operator. It'll frustrate the, the vendors and it just makes everything worse. Um, but, and then the other thing is, is when you go sit down at a conference, don't just go sit with your friend, break out, go sit where you can find people you don't know. Um, and that takes us to lunch. Um, if I go to lunch and I see a bunch of people that I know well sitting at a table, you know what I do? Go to a different table. They go to a different table. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I want to point out that the organizers of the events, they are trying to set it up so that you meet new people. So a lot of times, like if you've been to Smash, you know, the tables are set up to, with numbers on them and it's intended for you to go and meet new people. So that that's what the organizers have in mind behind their, you know, their conferences that they're creating. Yep. Um, Denise, how do you work cocktails parties? Uh, oh, I, it's not bad. I couldn't even answer you because I don't feel like it's working. You know what I mean? No, I like, but, I but how do you, you know, how, I mean, so one of the things that, so I, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to leave that question with you for a second right. and come back to you. Maybe right. just in terms of how you meet new people. I mean, in some sense, you're not the best person to ask this question because it comes so natural to you. You don't think about it. But I found, I, I will say that this is really the first year since I've been doing a uh, senior living foresight where I'm actually going with a team of my own people. I've always been mostly been going solo and it's really hard and it can be lonely and it's exhausting, but it's always so really good because it forces me to connect with other people. And you, Denise, you mostly have gone, mo you, you can continue to mostly go, go, go solo with people. But last year or two years ago at Leading Age, I had a really experience, interesting experience. A lot of Denise knows a lot of people that I don't know, or at least she used to. And so we would hang out together and it worked really good for us. That to sounds meet. like a challenge, Steve. Yeah, it, it is a challenge. And we're gonna get to we're gonna have a challenge that we're gonna talk about at the end of the at the end of the show. All right. But one year I uh, I hung out with um, I hung out with somebody else. And I, I Denise's story is that I abandoned her. My story is that she abandoned me. This was at leading age two years ago. And, but it turned out to be really, it, it was actually a good experience, at least for us. It probably took away from Denise, I'm sure, since I wasn't there. But, um, but, but what I found was by going with somebody else, um, I was introduced to a different circle of people mm -hmm. And so it was, it turned out to be really, um, you know, I missed hanging out with you, obviously, but I really, it was really valuable because I met people I wouldn't have been able to meet because she had different relationships than, than, than you and I had. Yeah, and so yeah. it was a way to expand. And so if you can find a wing person that's there. Um, also, if you go, if you see a group of people standing around, is it okay to go bust in and introduce yourself? So really? I would never do that. And Steve, when you said the other day that you welcome anybody to join your circle, I am never the person who will try to bust in to a conversation unless maybe I know somebody on this in that circle. But I have too many times have tried to step up and like waited for somebody to say hi to me and nobody did. And so I'm cowed from that experience. Denise, <laughs> would you walk into a group of people you didn't know? Uh, probably, uh, if there was a reason to walk in, you know, uh, so if there was a, uh, there, if there was a reason, uh, a point of entry, um, for me to say something, which probably there is, but that's a pretty hard thing to start. Like if you don't feel comfortable networking, that's, that's a pretty hard start. I think that's, um, this is, this is actually a great challenge for, for this year. So, um, getting people to, to be first off, getting people more, understanding that if somebody does walk up to a circle that they're that they're already in talk to the new person 
Like, yeah. Let, yeah. Bring them into the conversation. Yeah. And depending, I mean, you don't know what they're talking about either. So, I mean, like if you don't know the people, they could be talk, they could be, they could work together and be talking about something like, you know, so I guess it would depend sort of how inviting that it actually looks to be part of that conversation. But sometimes you can just tell like people get something to eat. They walk away from the buffet line. They're standing there just kind of gathering um, that I'd feel comfortable with. If it was a group of people sort of deep in conversation. It would sort of depend. Yeah. So I sort of assume, I mean, I'm probably, and it's really weird because I'm sort of the shy person in this group, or at least I used to be. Um, but I, um, I am, uh, I used to, I used to do that a lot. I, and I will still do it sometimes. Now, often, oftentimes at, at this point in time, I mean, I know a lot of people now, so it's, it's, it's probably harder for me to find a group of people where I don't know anybody, but that didn't used to be true. Mm. Um, and, um, I actually had a trick. I'm going to talk, we'll talk, maybe talk a little bit more about this later. But the first time I went to Nick, I got there half the Nick is typically a half a day in the afternoon and it was so intimidating. In fact, there was a, I was, I was working for visual health solutions. So I was on their dime and there was one other guy who was there who doesn't work for them anymore. So I feel comfortable talking about it. And he was so intimidated by it that he never went back for the rest of the show and the whole registration got wasted. I was so intimidated that I went back to my room and I thought, I'm, I got to figure out what to do. I actually set a goal to meet 100 people. And um, and so what I do is I walk in and I and I literally I maybe know four people there the first time I went. So I would walk into a group and I'd say, hi, I'm Steve Moran. And I know it seems weird for me to buy, butt in here, but I set a goal to meet 100 people. And so I'm just hoping I can add you to my list. Every time, almost every time it worked. I think maybe 10% of the time I'd get a bad reception and I felt stupid and awful and terrible, but it was worth it. Um, and, but I'm going to make an offer to all of you out here. Um, and again, you have to use some discernment. But if you see Denise or Lola or I in a group of people having a good time, come join us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I want to tell you that, Steve, you may not know this, but you and I had met at probably half a dozen conferences before we ever had a conversation. And it was just more in passing. Um, we were sitting near each other in a session or, you know, I, and I knew who you were. And we had had a couple conversations on the phone just because I was um, in PR for at one point. And it until we actually had a conversation, we didn't even realize that we lived 20 minutes from each other mm -hmm. and we'd known each other six or seven years. And so you, you got to have a conversation in order to find out these things. Right. That's right. And, um, and it, it can take time, but, but build the courage. And you know, that's all I can say is get the courage to go up and walk, talk to people. It'll be an amazing relationship that you build with them. Yeah. Denise thoughts. Um, well, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's so, it's bizarre for me to try to think through this standpoint of, of, uh, of, conversa of conversation because I just love people and I love meeting new people. So um, much to my kids' uh, dismay, you know, I will, I talk to anybody and everybody and uh, they'll always say to me like, why do you have to, uh, first of all, they say interrogate people because I'll ask a lot of questions because I'm, I'm interested in people. Um, and then the other thing they always say, why do you have to invite everybody over to our house to stay with us? Because anybody's, <laughs> that I tell where I live and say, oh, I've never, I'm like, oh, come visit. Uh, and I mean it. Um, so um, I don't know. I mean, I guess to me, if, if you could find somebody like at, at uh, whatever, whatever session that you're at, whether it's the keynote session, a breakout session, I mean, that just gives you a common um starting point for a conversation yeah. if you needed a conversation um, a starter. Um, but most of the time, I mean, that's that's what I do if I'm talking to somebody wherever they are in a store or at a conference or whatever. Um, not the airplane or the airport because I never talk to people on a plane or in the airport. But um, it's just some common thing, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, that's the one thing that I always laugh about with you is you have this one rule about never talking to people on airplanes. And I love when I talk to people on airplanes. So anyway, um, no time for that. So um, I want to talk for a minute about and I, I know the three of us have very different approaches to this. But if, if you go to conferences, you're going to have this profound moment of embarrassment. And it's going to look a couple ways. It's... Um, 
somebody will walk up to you and say, oh, man, it's been a long time since we've had a chance to talk. And what's going to go through your head is I have no idea who you are. I have never don't remember ever meeting you or somebody will walk up um, that maybe you saw even earlier in the conference and had a conversation with. And you will realize that you have no idea what it is they do or who they are. And it's a cocktail party. So they've taken their name badge off. So I'm going to start with um, Denise um, and I have a very different approach. I'm going to tell you what my approach is first. And then I'll let Denise and, and, and actually interesting, both Lola and Denise have very different ways they approach it, which are, and both of them are really, really cool. Um, I'll tell you what I do. And, and I will tell you because I, I broadcast out and so I have a big audience. I can maybe get away with it easier than sometimes. But my tendency is to say, I'm sorry, I'm sure I should remember who you are and what you do, but I forgot. Um, and so that's what I do. And of course, Denise, since I know well, you make fun of me. Well, depend. depend. No. <laughs> I don't the, 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 the DVS Charm School says that that's terrible, right? I was with Steve at a conference. Can I tell the story, Steve? Sure. The cat's out of the bag. Uh, we were at Leading Age. I don't remember how many years ago, three, four years ago. And then somebody that I know and that knew him um, said, uh, we were sitting talking and he said, uh, hey, Steve, he's like, you probably don't remember me. And Steve's like, no, I don't. And I was like, time out, DBS Charm School <laughs> got right there. And so we had a little Charm School lesson. I was like, what we should say, Steve, is, um, I knew your face looked familiar. It's so good to see you. <laughs> and uh, and then Steve, you know, it was great because he was a good sport, the guy too. And Steve was like, but that would be a lie. And I was like, I know it's a kind of nice, beautiful little <laughs> white lie. Steve uh, doesn't tell lies. <laughs> it, it, well, you could just say, I'm glad to see you, which is not a lie. That's um, true. But uh, so to me, it depends. And kind of like you, you know, I do a lot of keynotes and so forth. So people will come up to me and say, because like after a keynote, people will come up and speak to you. But like you're so high and you come crashing down. Like a lot of times I'll forget the people that I meet. And so they'll, or it could be from three years ago. And so they'll say like, oh, hey, Denise, blah, blah. And, and then I feel badly um, about that. So I will, um, I'll say something like, it's good to see you. Remind me what state I was at when we met or something like that. Um, so kind of depending on the, the situation, I had a woman that came up to me like a year ago or so. And she said right before COVID, a year and a half ago, I guess. I said, oh, my God, Denise, I um, I can't thank you enough. You changed my life. Now, changed my life. That's a bad thing to forget, right? Yeah. And I is. was like, uh, tell me what I did. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's I guess it kind of depends on the on the situation. Um, but I do. At, but I always want people and I hope that they leave that way, feeling that I'm so appreciative that they reached out. Yeah. And the, the, and, and the other thing I want to say to you is this happens to everybody. So you, yes. I know it feels stupid, everyone 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 everybody, everybody. but it yeah. happens to everybody. And Lola, you have a very different approach. I really actually like what you do. You might teach both Denise and I yeah. something with Oh, this. good. So I want to tell the whole audience, if I meet you at Argentum next month, I will not remember your name within the first five minutes. I will need to say it out loud five to 10 times before I remember it and connect with you on, on LinkedIn so I can read your name in another location. I need all of those reminders to, to embed that into my brain. So when I first meet somebody and they say their name, and if I forget it within that first couple of minutes and we're in a, in a circle of other people, I will introduce the two people. I'll say, oh, you know, Steve, this is my, my new friend. And I pause. So I allow the, the person to introduce themselves. Yeah. And yeah. that also works really, really well when somebody has a name that you can't pronounce. Yes. Yep. 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 Okay. We are, we are actually passed out of time. There's so much more, um, more we could be talking about. The first thing I want to say is I actually did a long form interview with Pam on how to network for Foresight Radio, our podcast. And that episode will drop on Wednesday of next week. And so if you want to do a much deeper dive into how to network, um, go listen to the podcast when it drops. The other thing is, is that I have a, I want to talk about a prop I use. I don't know whether you guys didn't use any props. I got, to, I got thinking about how I typically go to 15 to 18 conferences a year, uh, really work hard to meet lots of people. And I thought it'd be just fun to see how many conversations I keep, I have during the course of the year. 
So I went out and I purchased one of these. I got to figure it out because we got this narrow screen. You guys have seen these these little clickers, right? And I put it in my pocket. I was trying to be very secretive about it. And every time I'd have a conversation with somebody, I'd click it. But I wasn't very good about being secretive about it. And one day I happened to pull it out of my pocket and I was, I was, I talked to a group of people. And I was going, one, two, three, Bob, Sue, Denise, Lola. And somebody came up and said, What are you doing? And so I was sort of embarrassed, but I told them that I was using this to keep track. And then what I would do is I take the, at the end of each conference, I would take, I have a spreadsheet and I would put the conference name down and the number of conversations I had. I would only count a person once at a conference, assuming that I could remember I hadn't talked to him before. Right. And, but I wouldn't try to keep track of it and say, oh, well, I saw Denise at leading age, so I'm not going to count her at ACA. Uh, I would just count it again too hard to do. And so after a couple, I did this, I've done this twice, and I typically have 16 or 1700 conversations over the course of the year. I figure that's about a thousand unique people. And it turned out, I was so embarrassed using this, but it turned out when people started seeing me doing this, they, oh man, that's a really cool idea. And so now I'm actually very, very open about it. And a lot of people come up, people, two things will happen. People come up and say, what are you doing? Give me a chance to tell a story. Or they'll walk by me and they say, well, what's your count now? And I'll go, well, let me look in and I'll pull it out of my pocket and I talk about it. So I would recommend that everybody will do should do this. I know a lot of people won't. But to help you with that, two things. The first is, is we've got some uh, senior living foresight, foresight TV counters coming with our logo on them that we are going to be giving away. So if you would like to get one there, they, we're just ordering them, so we won't have them for a couple of weeks, but we would like to send you one. So the first 10 people who text to, hang on, let me get the new one here. Got to use my computer right. Text the word CLICK to 916-659-5287. And when we get them in, we'll up to 10 people. We will send out clickers to no charge. And we would like to see you use them. And we should probably even figure out some sort of a contest to um, see who gets the most at maybe just a single conference like Argentum. And, of course, it will be on our system. Maybe we'll give out some sort of a prize or something. Um, a couple other things that I would like to see people do is um, dress weird. Uh, you, if you know I me, mean, I have Chuck Taylors. I have, a, I have more Chuck Taylors than Imelda Marcos had shoes. And so you'll see me in Chuck Taylors that stand out. Um, I, um, uh, yeah, and there are a few other people you see who just dress in ways that they really stand out. And that, that's a way to start conversations. And the other thing is, is if you've got something you can give away that's got real value, like a clicker or a book, I'm not talking about sales sheets. That's a way to turn people off. Um, take something to give away. Denise, anything you do to sort of help further relationships, any kind of tricks, trades? No, but you know what? The one thing just for people who might not feel comfortable um, with networking, I always tell people whatever it is, practice in a safe space. So you can practice at Starbucks, starting a conversation with somebody in line. You could practice having a conversation with a barista. You can practice wherever Target. Uh, you know, it doesn't, if it, you know, make it sort of a neutral environment, like who cares if the person in Starbucks doesn't talk with you. Um, but if you keep on practicing it, you kind of just build that muscle. Um, it's, uh, it's a helpful way I find to practice in a neutral environment. Cool. Lola? Don't forget to connect with the people you meet on LinkedIn. You could do it right there. Say to them, can we connect on LinkedIn right now? And then do it because that's the best way to build your LinkedIn network. Is yeah, and there's a way to automatically, know. you should do that with your app. There's a way to automatically do it. The other thing is that I want to show you, this is my new business card I just had printed, but I wanted you to check this out. Um, there's a program. I don't have any ownership. I don't get any money from them. It's called Hi Hello. If you were, and you could even do this right here, maybe, um, you could scan that and- Wait, hold it up. Okay, <laughs> let's see if it works. You should yeah. be able to scan that and, and get my contact information should instantly show up on your phone. Woo. See, there it is. So, there it is. So, yeah. so I would really recommend it, it no the, the, for, for the level you and I are likely to use it, it's free, uh, but it's a great, great way to connect 
um, and sort of state having to type all that stuff and make the, the mistakes. So um, with that, uh, Lola, do you have any last words about connecting besides let's see, we want to see you in Argentum or Leading Age or Aka or Nick or um, Smash? I, Smash, every, all of them. We want to see you at all of them. So last words are make sure that you subscribe to Senior Living Foresight. Go to our website, seniorlivingforesight.net, hit the subscribe button, and you will get daily emails from Steve. Cool. Denise. Last words. Um, I won't be at Argentum, but if I see you at Leading Age or ACA or any of the state uh, associations, um, come over. If I'm talking to a potted plant, uh, please interrupt. Uh, I'd love to meet you. What if you're not? What if you're talking to a real person instead of a real person? Is it still okay? Yeah, it's still okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, one more thing I want to say about texting to this number. Um, one, If you have not texted this before, if you're not part of our text community, you're going to get a form back that's uh, a link that you need to fill out to complete the process. It, it will ask you, you know, your name and the usual stuff. The one thing that it'll ask you that I really hate that I can't don't have any control over, it was ask you your birth date, including your year. It's okay to lie. I, you do not have to tell us your real age. Um, I don't know why they do that. I think it has to, I think there's some laws and stuff, and, but, but it's okay to lie. You won't offend me. Um, tell us your two or tell us your 200. That'd be great. So with that, Denise, Lola, thank you. We've gone way over time. Great conversation. You guys can hang out for a second, but let me end the broadcast. Okay, perfect.